I thought that yesterday was going to be the day for the Sean the Merman six color print on that octopus looking like thing, but we didn't have time to get to it yesterday. Uh, thankfully, that order is not due till next week anyways. So we have the screens already burned for the design. We went 230 on the base, uh, pretty much 175 on the rest of them. I love high mesh, especially with designs like this that have half tones in them and then um, very fine lines. So we're gonna figure out if we can go around one time. Uh, I kind of was <clears throat> putting the frames where I wanted them, depending on how the sequ sequence was gonna go. So this is what I decided. I decided to go with the base here. So we have the base, we're gonna flash it. We're gonna have a cool down station and then we're gonna go white highlight then we're gonna print the half tones here, wet on wet. I'm still indecisive on which one's gonna go first. We have like a teal looking one and a purple looking one. So I may end up with the teal last because I don't want the purple to overpower the teal. That way they can do their wet on wet thing, kinda get the colors to blend. And then we're gonna finish off the last uh, of the four that are wet on wet with a deep purple. After that, we're gonna flash it one more time and unfortunately we don't have a cool down station because this head is down but right after the flash we're gonna have black one we're gonna finish off with the black one this is going on black t-shirts but i have mentioned again in the past that i like to have a black in the uh, print if it's necessary in order to clean out the image and make sure that it looks nice and crisp this comes down to what I was talking about the other day on the uh, rest in peace design, you know, burn an extra screen just to co go the extra mile for the design to look good because at the end of the day, it's your product that's going out the door and, you know, you want your customer to show it off and say like, hey, this is the guy that printed them, shout out to that guy, repost, and that's how you get more business. So it's always good to go the extra mile. If I have to go around twice, <clears throat> I'm okay with it. This order's only like 28 pieces or somewhere around that range, not too crazy. And the reason why I didn't want to do it on the manual is because, you know, first of all, we have six colors. On there, I would have had to flash a little bit more. And then we have those half tones going, so that's why it's going on the auto. All right, so in the office, we have a little project going on. I'm kind of getting tired of the black walls. My brother printed. Paint the, my brother painted these walls when he moved in because he was going to do like a music studio type of thing and he wanted everything black so uh, getting tired of it so I got my dad to help me paint it we're going to go from black to white no. All right. ain't that right Dominic? that's right that's right Okay, so we had Dominic over here picking the uh, teal-ish color because out of all the ones that we need, that's the one that I don't have <clears throat> here in my stockpile. So he was trying to do the best that he can to match that teal to whatever is close here on the uh, Pantone book so we can mix it. That's the purple we're gonna go with, or the uh, lavender. That's the purple right there. This is the closest we had, but it was somewhere in the middle that we needed. So which one did you pick? That's right. That was one of these two. I like that one. Yeah. We're going to pull it up and mix it. And then after that, we're going to finish the setup so you guys can see um, how it turns out. I really do want to go around one time on this project because uh, the blend of the half tones is just going to look better. And uh, Dominic's going to learn a lot today. That's right. So this is one thing that I like to do when I mix inks. Instead of uh, putting ink directly into a dry bucket, I grab my Chino base and I just kind of like move it around in there. Make sure we have some lubrication so that the ink doesn't just get stuck straight to the walls. And then we're after that, we're going to go ahead and start mixing. You good over there? I am. That's gonna be black. Black. Make it look professional, you guys. 
Uh, we're gonna write down the information once we're done mixing the ink. All right, so for this uh, 3105 teal, we're gonna use 686 grams of the white. Six eighty six of the white. Then we need sixty four grams of the blue number one. So check this out. This is where where uh, confusion happens. So we have a blue number two, and then a blue number one over here, right there. So if you guys happen to grab the wrong one by accident and you guys put a blue number two where it's asking for a blue number one, you're going to get a totally different color. And you're not going to know why until you go back and figure out which one you grab. You're going to mix it again and, you know, it's, it sucks because it's expensive. So be careful with that. one more to go and the last one is a fluorescent lemon this is kind of like the thing that sucks about mixing ink sometimes I only need 51 grams of this lemon so uh, not a whole lot but I had to open up a new gallon for this so paying for the whole gallon just to get 54 grams sucks but it has to be done. So this, uh, this is the thing about mixing inks, you guys. When you're mixing inks, you're adding weight to your scale. So for example, we started with 686. If you don't tear that number out and start from zero and you start adding more ink, you're gonna lose track and it's gonna give you the, the wrong shade of uh, blue or whatever color you're mixing. So don't forget, like right now, I just finished putting the blue. I gotta tear it and start from zero so that I know that I'm only putting 51 grams of this fluorescent yellow. So we don't wanna get any ink on our equipment or our hands. I want to share something with you guys that I don't think I've said in the past. Maybe I have. Maybe I have. I said that when I got into screen printing, the very, 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 very first thing I ever did was mix inks for that company. So I wasn't pulling shirts. I wasn't uh, catching shirts. I wasn't uh, doing anything else but mixing inks. Unfortunately, I did mix some inks that were the wrong color by the gallons. So now going back and thinking about it after so long, it's just... It was such a waste of money. I don't know why they had me there. But then again, they needed help. They didn't have anything else. And I learned very quickly. So maybe it was worth it after all. Either way, um, something that you guys probably didn't know. But we're gonna go ahead and get ready to start mixing this. Again, um, I put the chino base around the bucket before I put the ink in there. And I do the same thing with the spatula. Uh, I like to mix these with the metal spatulas because you get to move the ink around a little bit better. And if you dip this in the Chino base, you don't get the actual color stuck to the, to the pack. You don't get the actual color that you put in there stuck to the spatula and then you have to like come back and scrape it off so that Chino base just kind of makes everything easier. And uh, once we get that color, I'm gonna show you guys, match it to the Pantone book and then continue with the setup. matching it to this color no we did 3105 yeah, 3105. yeah that's the top one not yeah. the bottom one. 
so that looks like it's it right there. Come on, you focus piece of shit. Hey, uh, uh, Dominic, we just finished uh, running the first sample, right? Yes. That's right. That's right. All right. All right, you guys. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, first sample. It went around one time. Uh, I think we need to warm up the boards to get the nice, smooth print. The first one's a little bit rough because we just kind of ran it down. But overall, it turned out really good. So like I said, we have the base, flash, and then we have the white, the uh, lavender, going wood on wood with the 3501? 3105. 3105. And then we finish off with the deep purple. I don't know, it's kind of hard to see the deep purple here on camera, but it's little details going around the octopus. We flash that and then we finish with the black to make sure that it cleans up all these little lines. And this right here, it's not black going on top of the blue, it's just blue going directly into the shirt so it gives it that shadow effect without having to put black halftones on top. So did you guys hear that little sticking noise? That's because we have those four colors flashing and then hitting the black afterwards. So it, the ink is not like, I don't know. Sometimes the ink's a little bit thicker and it tends to stick like that. So we use this silicone uh, very rarely, but when this happens, you know, we just kind of spray it on there and it helps with the tackiness. And that's gonna be the setup for the six color uh, one time around on the automatic for Sean the Merman, all high mesh, uh, one time around. And we have Dominic over here loading the t-shirt because he gained our trust with loading and unloading and moving the buttons on the machine. So his days are numbered here. I think uh -oh. tomorrow's his last day. Let me scare, man. You be good? You're not gonna rip the shirt? I'm sure you're strong, but you know, shirt's gonna be all right. So that is one thing that I like. Uh, if you have ever done half tones in the past, what you wanna do is you wanna have the uh, solid color fade all the way to the top of where the top color starts solid and that one fades all the way to the bottom. That way they kind of blend into themselves and you don't have like a straight line that ends with the half tones. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys have that problem out there because it's very common and just remember to always burn on high mesh especially if you're using an automatic because you're not the one pulling the squeegee and um, that's going to be it for today i hope you guys learned something high mesh and always before you set up kind of think about the setup so that you know what sequence is going to go in and if it doesn't work out for whatever reason you can always revolve it which we always try to avoid by any means but that's it go ahead and like this video subscribe to the channel Share the channel if you think it's gonna help somebody. Like I said, with separations, if you guys need help, um, go ahead and contact my friend. Kill a culture, I'm gonna leave the link below again on the description, so go ahead and hit them up. And that's gonna be it for today, so peace. Good luck out there.